Hi everyone. So today I'm going to talk about the synthesized workflow that was published two years ago in the Autodesk Knowledge Network. So uh, today in 2018, things has changed, many things have been updated. The synthesized workflow itself was only for Fusion 360 and Voronoi patterns, but now it has developed hugely to have more than 200 tools within it, and Fusion is only one of the tools. So it's it's right it's 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 considered one of the tools, but still so many updates have happened to this. So I'm gonna discuss those updates and I'm gonna show you examples on how the new workflow works. So I'm gonna try to keep it as simple as possible, but before I get started, I wanna go give a thanks to Professor Thomas from University of Florida and his students to help us test and verify the workflow. Uh, and the workflow quality. So, um, in order to get started, I'm gonna assume that you have Synthesize Toolkit installed and Dino Player ready to go. Uh, to know how to do that, just check the description of this video. I've I've linked another video called Synthesize Overview, so you can actually know how to install and start Dynamo and Dynamo Player. So, let's go to Fusion now. And I'm gonna create some sort of form, any kind of form. Of course, I'm using millimeters now in this, that's all right, that's gonna be fine. I'm 100 by 180, and maybe just have some faces like this. And I believe that's gonna be fine for me here. I don't need much of complexity here. I'm just gonna do some stuff, stuff around, just basic stuff. Of course, I have, I have, I do not have lots, of, lots of knowledge in fusion, but for the sake of this exercise, I'm gonna do some sort of stuff here, like this, and that'll be alright for now. And let's see. Finally, I'm gonna stretch the whole form a bit, to, just to have some extra space down to make a void. This is of course optional and depending on your knowledge in Fusion, you have the control on whatever you want. Now, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna draw an extrusion here. I'm gonna be symmetrical to make a void. And we're done here. Of course you can do any sort of other planes that can be pretty easy to create. So for example, I'm gonna create some a plane here. And that's it, I'm gonna mirror it, and here you go, so something like this, should be easy. Now, finish the form, and I'm gonna try to file, export, and export to SAT, and I'm gonna go for, let's say, Fusion Test, I'm gonna call it Test1, and I have exported. In Revit, now the workflow doesn't work in the project environment, it works in the conceptual mass, which has been proven to be uh, much better regarding the performance and the quality control, of course, not to mention the ability from Dynamo to deal with the patterns associated with the mass we're going to insert. So, Dynamo Player. Now let's search for Fusion setting and browse for the set. Choose it. Choose your scale. Of course, I have used the millimeters, but before I get going, I have to make sure I'm using meters here. And I'm going to scale them by 1000 meters each. That means 1000 multiplying with the millimeters. That'll give me the exact scale I'm looking for here. Of course, you can change that according to your needs. Now, the final one is choosing the conceptual mass template. Of course, it's all right to choose something older than the version you're using. I'm using 2019, and I'm going to use the template of 2018. That'll be all right. And, of course, if you use 2019, it's better and better. But this is the defaults here. Of course, you can change it. Now, just click on play and give it some time. You'll just have to wait a couple of seconds, no more. It's now pasting the elements, and things are gaining well, and we're done here. And here we go, so this is the mass, and this is the surface I've inserted. Of course, everything is in separate family, as you can see, edit family, 
edit family which is actually pretty organized and uh, of course you can tab into any face and divide the surface and you have you can have your own pattern on this we're gonna have this exercise in the next couple of seconds or minutes so um, this is basically the workflow itself it's pretty straightforward and fast of course uh, let's say if I try to edit anything let's see for example I want to edit this I want to punch this inside I'm gonna finish and I'm gonna re-export again oh, let's say before I re-export I'm gonna edit the surface 2 here I'm gonna let's say make the bit down here and make the middle one up so something pretty a bit couple of changes here to this and I'm gonna export them again or I've decided to add uh, an extra plane of course you can do whatever 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 you want and this plane is gonna be something like this and something like this so Oh, sorry and the edit form like this so I'm gonna click on finish and I'm gonna export again export to set choose the test one okay and here just click on play and oh uh, before I continue I forgot to actually choose whatever I wanted because because I have clicked on refresh button and everything got reset to Default, so I'm gonna choose this test one again. I'm gonna choose the same scale I have chosen before and click on play. Just give it a couple of more seconds and things are updating. And the final form is getting updated now. And here we go. Everything got updated. Of course, the um, the awesome thing is that let's say I have decided to divide the surface of this, divide the surface of this, maybe divide the surface of this. So I've made some changes. I have moved the things around, and maybe in in general, I've made a mess here. And if I went to Fusion, let's see, I want to edit this, and I want to make this actually a little bit more sensible something like this okay so I have to export again and set choose the test one okay that's it just click I haven't clicked on refresh here so everything is stayed as it was and just click play again so the awesome thing is that this workflow keeps everything updated uh, of course the, never mind about the mess it's creating it'll fix itself eventually just give it a couple of seconds so it'll keep everything as it was the divided surfaces as they were the solids as they were everything as exactly it was and we'll also reorganize them according to fusions organization here so it's something pretty awesome to have of course uh, if you have noticed I just keep on clicking refresh here uh, just a quick tip for Dynamo, whatever you click on refresh, the, the data are flushed and you have a refreshed something, let's say, faster preview in Revit. So this is basically the workflow. It's pretty fast and easy to use. And I'm going to see, let's say, I'm going to test something beautiful on it. Let's say I'm going to test the pattern and let me see. I'm going to search for something to save this pattern called triangle flat and let's say... I'm gonna test it on here, let's say the surface be 8 by 3, something like this. The surface is gonna be like these, and let's see the triangles. And the thing I meant in the beginning of the video that this environment is more recommend because I can actually let's say place a point in here and let's see how it this family behaves so this is a different subject from the video but I'm testing the ability the parametric ability of this family so let's say the minimum one is 12 and the maximum one is uh, let's say 1 so I'm gonna go for dynamo player and I'm gonna go for K attractor and I'm gonna say get yeah, attractor by family and type and I'm gonna use this family name here and I'm gonna use the parameter it's changing 
and I'm going to use it from 1 to 12 and I'm going to proceed and I'm going to say this is my attractor point and I'm going to click on play. So of course you can see the how the K-attractor works in another video in the channel called K-attractor or Parametric Computational Designing. You're free to use the, to watch that video and for now let's see how things behave. So as you can see here, the the things that are near to the point are the most the have the most opened ones, and the ones that are far from the points are the most closed ones. So this is a very very quick example. Of course, if you made any change here, let's say for example I made change in here like this, and I'm gonna oh sorry uh, like let's say edit the form here, make change like this. I'm gonna export again. And to the to the sat file now in Revit go to Fusion Sat Sync choose the file the same scale you've used before and play it. So it's gonna update while keeping everything as it is. Uh, of course, while it's updating, let me tell you about the fresh start here. The fresh start is needed only when you have problems updating stuff or things going wrong way. Some ex unexpected things happen. Just click on fresh start and click on play. It'll delete everything and uh, give you everything back again. So just give it a couple of more seconds here till it updates whatever you want to update. So, it's completed now, and as you can see here, Control Z. Let's see, it was something like this, and I'm gonna back it back, and it's now something like this. So uh, the surface got updated according to the Dynamo, or according to the Fusion surface. Of course, you'll need to know that those surfaces are not actual, are now more like. Uh, 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 flattened rectangles, uh, uh, triangles, so it's normal to have this minor update here. Uh, if you want to see a bigger update, we're just going to have to update this again and just resync them, and everything works as expected. Of course, uh, it's basic knowledge in Revit to know that those masses are hidden while they are loaded in the project environment, so options are infinity. Uh, of course, you can do uh, dozens of stuff with this. Um, that I try to keep this video simple as possible. There are such stuff like fusion split and other stuff. Maybe in next videos I'm gonna explain the complexity of those things. But generally, uh, this is the basic idea. And of course, uh, if you try to load this into the project environment, let's say loading this into the project here. It's going to be pretty straightforward that like any kind of other masses, just load it, activate mass floors, and do your things. Let's just give it a couple of seconds to be loaded. Okay. And I'm going to just... As soon as I see the preview, I'm gonna I'm gonna click. And of course it's gonna give me a warning for some of the surfaces are mesh and others are solids. That's alright because I have surfaces in that family. Now I'm gonna go to 3D and I'm gonna see this. Of course, uh, you can use the mass floors to generate the floor plans. And let's see something like this. And here you go. The floors are generated successfully, and of course you can, um, let's say, override it by surface transparency, so you can see it's something like this. 
So the floors are generated. You can use them. You can build your floors. You can build your curtain systems. You can do your stuff and the dividing and whatever. Of course, I can hide the mess and leave the adaptive and the patterns on. This is uh, knowledge in Revit, not the subject of this video, but still, it's working. And hope you enjoy it. So that's it for now. See you in the next videos.